Hi everyone, here is round 2 from the first rapid play of the 2013 British Chess Championships. And this was a much harder game because this oh, the, these opens were completely open. Sorry, these rapid plays were completely open, so there was, there was actually a few GMs and IMs in it. And I was on 1 out of 1, but sadly, because of my dreadful fee day, even though my ECF is now 169 at rapid, I was... Um, Actually, in fact, I was the lowest player to have won in round one, so I got um, someone on half. Um, I got Paul Kemp, who is 180 ECF and 2037 fee day. But I did get white at least. Um, I played e4. He responded with the Sicilian defence. And actually, when I looked at his games later in the tournament, um, you don't, you don't really see it in this game, but he is a proper hacker, like he plays King's Gambits and stuff like that. And basically lines up F4 is white, Grand Prix attacks. But I play the C3 Sicilian, which is anything but aggressive. Um, White is just aiming to try and get two pawns in the centre. But because it's a rather timid move, Black Duke has plenty of ways to arrange counterplay. And he played one of them, which is G6, which is what um, accelerated Dragon players usually play. And he said after the game that he plays that. I put d4, and the point is of the takes takes. You hit white in the center with d5, and white can either push with e5, which I don't like because um, yes, stuff like knight a6 to f5 and queen b6 and d4 usually comes under a lot of fire. So I play a rather dull line where both sides get an IQP. So after knight f6, we play bishop b5 check, and he played the better of the two in which is knight bd7. I played d6. Because the point is, I mean, look, that pawn's going to drop off anyway at some point. It can't be defended enough. And it'd be still a tang on to it anyway, because you just get, like, dangerous gambits and that. So I just give it back to give him um, black and IQP as well. And actually, the best suit in this position is queen e2 check, which I actually knew it was, but I couldn't remember the follow-up after queen e7. Um... And so I thought, no, I'll just play a developer move, but this is best, and I think you play bish g5. And after something like queen takes queen, knight takes queen, the bishop comes to e7 instead, and this is about equal this, but we can play for a win. I played knight c3, rather timid move, and a6. And in my game against Damien McCarthy at Huddersfield, I played a very bad move, bishop a4, which just allows b5 and bishop b7 with tempo. So I went back to d3, which is my improvement. Um, bishop g7, knight f3, again queen e2 checks good. Castles, castles, b5. And this should be about equal this. Maybe I can consider a4. But I think he just plays b4. And then play knight e4. And we get a similar position to, position, position to game actually. After knight takes, bishop takes, rook a7. I don't see what edge white has got in this position. Even after bishop f4. Because we can just play knight f6. I played bishop f4 trying to hit the um, weakness on d6 and the point is black never wants to play d5 in this position because it gives me a nice easy e5 square. That, that pawn is very annoying but he played knight b6 because black's square is d5 in this position. Because of course I'm, cause that's the problem, problem with having the pawn on d4 is that black can get his squares. I played knight e4 and after knight takes c4. Bishop takes e4, he played rook a7, which is a very nice move actually, because the rook's very active on the second rank, and can come to c7 and try and contest the c line, which is now open. And you see what I mean about the c3 Sicilian, like this is just a very drawish position. Everything, everything's going to come off on the c and e files. But I'm outrated by a lot of 300 three day points, so a draw's not the end of the world. I played h3 to give my square bishop a retreat square, because I like it on um, h2. I also have a plan of playing queen d2 and bishop h6 to trade off black's very active bishop. Uh, he played bishop b7, which trades off my active bishop and um, gets rid of his bad one. Rook c1, queen d7, rook e1, very dry position, rook c7, after rook takes c7, queen takes c7, I played bishop g5. Um, now he played knight d5. Which covers the e5 square because basically I was trying to provoke f6, I was because then I can get a rook to e6 potentially and double on the e5 and get some pressure going. But he didn't fall for it and played knight d5. I played queen d2 trying to get bishop h6 in. 
We've got Kim to C8. Uh, no, actually, I have to be careful. Because I calculated if I played naturally with Rook C1, this is very bad for. Well, I can actually lose a pawn at the end of all of it, which I'd seen. Because after Queen takes, everything comes off. And he plays Knight B4, hitting the A pawn. And if I play A3, Knight comes into D3, and I drop the B2 pawn. And otherwise, I drop the A2 pawn, and Black should win the pawn up. So, but the point is, I have a nice tactic actually. Because first I play a3 to stop any implants, so now my next move is going to be rook c1 and gain a level ending. And the reason this is justified is because if black plays queen c2, which looks natural, then I just take the queen. Because after rook takes c2, black is mated by rook e8 check, bishop f8 and bishop a6. And nothing can be done. Another nice flashy way to do it is to play rook e8 check. But well, that just wins the queen for a rook, because of course um, black's best is to take the rook. Um, that's what probably they played as well, because it's more flashy. So it's called a hook. This is called the um, hook and ladder trick. This, but he played a5, and now of course I played rook c1, stopping. Well, I can start actually keep the tension because queen c2 is still not a threat, and otherwise he's got no squares to penetrate on on the um, c line. But I played rook c1 to get a nice ending after everything came off, and I played a4. So his point is to fix my own queen side and maybe try and win b2 in some lines. But both sides have their trumps, we've both got weak d-pawns, black's got d5, I've got e4 potentially. Or in fact what I did was I stuck my bishop on d2 to stop his knight from coming anywhere and stop any b4 pushes. So he brings his king in, because in the end in the king's the most important piece, king f1, h6. So otherwise if he moves any further I can play knight g5 and to e4 with tempo. So a6 to stop that, king e2, king e7, king d3, king e6, and I played g4 to stop his own king coming any further. I played f5 trying to gain control, and I played g5, which is actually a good move. So after h takes g, knight takes g, he played king f6. And before I could play um, f4 or h4, he offered me a draw, which I accepted practically instantly because it's just a very dry ending. Um, and he was in the air less time than me as well, which didn't help. But um, yeah, sorry for the rather dull game, but there's plenty more exciting games to come. And it was a good draw and put me on one and a half out of two. And gave me some good few day points, and I hope you enjoyed it. And please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.